He is Robin Leach. He is Jada Markin. This is Car Keys. And it is indeed, and uh, in a previous show, we said we were going to talk about uh, 2022 vehicles that are on stream to come online and to come into dealer showrooms, and we'll get to that in a little while, but I want to start out the first part of this particular edition with a discussion about uh, Ford's Bronco, which has uh, got teething problems, uh, which are just growing by the hour from the standpoint of uh, previous sales or, or orders being able to be deliverable. Uh, there are several thousand sitting in a lot near the production center uh, awaiting Ford's solution to, <laughs> of all things, a hard roof deterioration problem, which means in the molded roofs that are planned to be the match the vehicle color, uh, there is a problem with deterioration under wet and then, uh, wet weather. And that's all I'm going to say about it. But Ford has stopped deliveries in some cases. Uh, Owners are not going to get their vehicles for some weeks, if not months, longer than they were already originally delayed in getting them. And it is a mess. And as Jay has mentioned in earlier shows about Ford and some of its issues with uh, new car launches, boy, is he spot on with this one. Um, you know, Sadly. Uh, it's interesting that Wabasto, which is a major, which is the major supplier, if not the only supplier, roof of hardcover roofs for the Bronco, uh, has been in business for a long time, and uh, <clears throat> to, for them to have a problem with a quality uh, of manufacture of something as important as a hardcover roof for a major new launch is uh, is something that uh, no manufacturer wants to have happen to them. Uh, ever, but it's already happened. That's that on the Bronco situation. There is a Bronco over where I am uh, recording this show from. I have not gotten up close to see it. I have seen it in a driveway. It is, uh, appears to be a gray one, and it appears to have a black hard top roof. Uh, I want to get closer to it, um, but I have another uh, a relative who has been awaiting his new Bronco for uh, delivery, and it apparently arrived at the dealership with a shattered front windshield. And so he, we are going to see this relative shortly when I'm recording from, but we were hoping he was going to arrive in his new Bronco, and it is awaiting a windshield, and I don't know how long it's going to take to get a new windshield for that car. So there's another teething issue, not due to, theoretically, a defect in windshields. We don't know how it got shattered, the dealer just told him it arrived at the dealership with a shattered windshield. Uh, whether that really happened or it happened on the dealership lot, we will never know. Let me add one little problem they have, too, just to, you know, uh, uh, harp on the, on the subject. Um, apparently, when you drive at highway speed with certain models of the Bronco, depending on which grill you have, the car just whistles along. And it's it what? Just, whistles? It whistles, yes. There's a whistling sound coming from yeah. the front grill. Do we know whether that's a hard, co- hard roof issue too, Jay? That's interesting. I didn't, hadn't read about that. But anyway, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a great vehicle when, it, when they eventually get it all together. All the magazine reviews so far are stellar with their reviews of the Bronco and say how competent and capable and everything else it is in comparison with the Jeep Wrangler, which is its main uh, rival in the market. Uh, so it's got all good uh, re- reviews for it, for if they can get it to the market and to the people who want one uh, with uh, all these little niggly, maybe big niggly problems solved so that they don't spend a lot of time in the dealer's uh, <clears throat> repair centers after they've actually received them to drive them. Uh, on the Conversely, we have a lot of news on EV sales um, successes. I'll start with Norway. Uh, the interesting thing about Norway is the Ford Mackey Mustang is the hottest selling, was the hottest, and is the hottest selling uh, EV in Norway. In, in, you that, know, that's not only Tesla the hottest sales selling EV, I think both June and July. Um, but to the U.S., we have uh, first half uh, sales results for EVs, 
and Tesla Model Y and Tesla's Models Y and three top the list, but the Chevrolet Bolt third, and uh, fifth down the line I think is the Ford Mac E, and uh, there's a Ford Mac E uh, over here where I am recording from, as I keep saying, and uh, the owner of that Ford Mac E is a husband uh, of a couple whose wife drives a Tesla. And so she has the Tesla. He has just gotten his Ford Mackey, and he says he likes the Mackey more than uh, he likes the Tesla that he has. So um, good news for Ford Mackeys. But then we go to the dilemma Ford has with the Mackeys, and they've got fifty to 60,000 of them sitting on the lots because they are awaiting chips or software uh, connector things. So Ford's got problems on two fronts of two very important vehicles. Jay? Well, I, I think that, well, the, the, the supply, uh, the logistics problem uh, Ford has is, is the same as every other manufacturer, right? I Correct. Mean, the production, the car production is just uh, um, delayed all over the place. I'll right. finish your and sentence. Uh, as we know, um, it's going to last for a while longer. So let's get to our, our new cars coming out. Yeah, let's market. do that. Where do you want to start? Um, I, I, I'm looking at a, a very well uh, done picture, advertising picture from Mercedes of their uh, uh, EQS, which is coming out this fall. And again, it's another very high end uh, luxury vehicle, uh, as the E uh, stands for electric EQS. It is uh, the electric version or counterpart of Mercedes S Class Mercedes. So, um, you know, I, I think it's fair to say, and I believe that the, the S-Class Mercedes has always been like the uh, the most technologically advanced car in production. And, and over the decades, we've seen the features come out in S-Class Mercedes trickle down to the rest of the Mercedes line and eventually into more uh, uh, affordable cars. So there's certainly a trickle-down effect there. And, and the new EQS is interesting because it's a totally separate and different platform. So Mercedes is not trying to build their electric cars on the same platform as the uh, gas-powered cars. Um, it, it looks not quite like an S-Class. It's got a more, uh, uh, a more I was going to say more modern, but less conventional, let's say, uh, design that's more um, maybe accepted by people who are, are buying electric vehicles. I mean, it doesn't have a Tesla look. I don't really love the look of it, uh, but when you read the features, it is packed with all the tech stuff that uh, the, the S-Class uh, has. And I think it's going to be a, 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 an important uh, product in both Mercedes lineup and in, uh, as a benchmark in the EV world. Uh, but that's just, you know, that's, again, it's, uh, um, it's not, a, not a car you're going to see at every corner of the street. No, but I do agree with you. I think Mercedes is doing a great job uh, with the, the development of their vehicles. And as the <clears throat> European models uh, transition into the E world, uh, the electric world, that means basically you're talking about uh, uh, Mercedes, BMW, Audi, and then on the English side, the, the, um, the, the Jaguars, um, that you're seeing... They're all ready to go with these cars. Uh, they've not been there has not been as much uh, uh, product discussion in, in the uh, public in the general public's uh, radar as uh, as have the uh, as has Tesla, of course, and so, uh, the lo- local ones of the local manufacturers, the Bolt. So, what, Bolt, what strikes you in, uh, in the new cars coming out, Robin? Yeah, I know we're on new cars coming out. That's right. Um, and I'm looking at the 2022 Volkswagen Golf R uh, with a little subtitle saying a VW Golf that drifts. Now, drifting is an interesting situation with four-wheel drive cars. Uh, I am not a drifter, so I can't tell you the technology, but the article on this uh, Golf R, which is going to be one of only two Golf models that's coming to the U.S. in 2022, the base Golfs have disappeared, uh, is getting a lot of uh, accolades from Motor Trend magazine, and uh, it's good that, uh, as they say in their article, that the U.S. is going to be getting the, probably the best versions of this vehicle uh, for the coming year. Uh, I'll yeah, go so the R, the all-wheel drive uh, version, and a little more powerful version of the uh, 
uh, GTI that's been around since 1976. Right. Um, although it's grown, of course, and become and, and has gotten to be a much more powerful car. So, the, the power output, I think, with the two cars, stays around the same in the 220 to 250 horse for the G- front drive GTI, GTI, and <clears throat> about and over 300 horse, just over 300 horse for the Golf R. I believe both cars will come, will be available with a uh, standard transmission, yeah, six um, speed, and, plus and a seven speed dual clutch. Uh, so anybody who wants a manual transmission car uh, does not have a lot to look at, and uh, the Golf should uh, satisfy those who uh, want a very wonderfully driving uh, version of the Golf that's been around for years as a GTI. And uh, good luck the with that. The one model we will not get uh, in, in the Golf lineup, well, we're not getting any other other than those two, but, and again, having been in Europe uh, not too long ago, um, did come across the new GTD, uh, and again, <laughs> with, with, a, with a, a latest version of a diesel engine put in a, in a GT, quote-unquote, GTI um, package, um, and it is just as great as a GTI with better mileage. But that's neither here or there because we're not getting it. That's right. So I'm going to continue on the 2022 uh, gasoline version vehicles so far, and then we can go back to what you have, Jay. Um, the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz, which is a truck that's not a truck truck, as the article says. Uh, they call it sort of a trucklet. Uh, what was the Subaru version of this, Jay, that was out years ago? And uh, last the several the years. Baja or the... Uh, Baja? Uh, what was the other... Um, yeah, it was Baja. a truck. And, and, and actually, Subaru is coming out with a, a similar type vehicle. I think that's going to be based on the Forester. Yeah, and it may not it may not be here by 2022. It will but not. No. The uh, Santa Cruz is to is badge is a 2022. It looks just like a real grown up Subaru in in a lot of ways. Uh, obviously, the front ends don't look the same, but the back and the contour of the roof line down sweeping down into the four by four cargo area uh, reminds me of that Subaru uh, version of this uh, kind, this designed vehicle. Uh, it's gonna it'll suit a lot of people. I do not know uh, how the what is the uh, Ford mini truck called? Not the Falcon, but the Maverick. Uh, maybe it is the Falcon. Anyways, no, that's the Maverick. Gonna, Maverick. The Maverick. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a similar uh, size vehicle, I believe. Uh, albeit, I think it's going to come as all electric and only all electric. Um, no, no, no. The Maverick is uh, based on the Bronco. Well, uh, one of them's coming is only electric, um, and it's going to be priced in the low twenties. Uh, for people who just want something that does basic, like garbage hauling type of stuff, truck, as opposed to the the big boys who, which can do everything, uh, including towing. Uh, what are those third hitch? What is the bed hitch called in the in the large pickup trucks? Uh, uh, where they can tow uh, big trailers, including yeah, amper uh, vehicles. Well, the, the, aren't there the two kinds? There's the hitch, and then there's the gooseneck, the thing that goes over the top. Gooseneck, that's what I wanted, Jill. Thank you very much. I'm, by the way, you're not able to hear Jay, and he is actually filling in these words. It's not that – all I know is that I tried to sell a trailer with a hitch, and they wanted a trailer with a gooseneck. <laughs> well, but. that's good. Uh, the gooseneck uh, uh, hitches, which you, you can get in the big pickup trucks. Um, with that in mind, uh, I think the uh, industry, there's a push to uh, develop a real the big heavy-duty industry and get, bring them into the electric world. Uh, I'm still on, I'm going to stay on record by saying I doubt that uh, unless they have remote battery packs in the, in the uh, trailers that some of these trucks are trying to haul around, that means campers and that kind of thing with the gooseneck hitches in them, uh, I do not uh, expect that uh, they're going to find a e-truck that will be able to deliver a 300-mile towing range when they're loaded down with uh, a heavy towed vehicle. Or okay, towed. I'm going to beg to disagree, and only to the ahead. extent that the, you have the same issue of range with a gas or a diesel-powered truck when towing, uh, and I see that with my Volkswagen when I'm towing my 6,000-pound trailer. My uh, mileage goes from 30-plus uh, miles per gallon down to exactly half of that. So right. the, 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 the range, uh, you know, going way down with, with an electric tow vehicle is just, it 
just exactly on par with what's happening with uh, gas or diesel power. Yes, but yeah. until you have ubiquitous, I mean, just numbers of charging stations and fast charging capabilities of those electric vehicles, Jay, I don't care what you want to say to defending the, uh, that with uh, fossil fuel vehicles. 15 miles per gallon uh, with a 30-gallon tank is still 400-plus miles uh, pulling range, um, whereas you're not going to get that with an EV truck. Uh, with batteries underneath trying to pull a 10,000-pound uh, 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 vehicle uh, or tow, tow vehicle behind it. I'm not the one that's really uh, saying this isn't going to happen. Uh, you talk to the men, the male version of, of a truck driver on the street, and they don't think it's it, it's going to be ever ever possible. Now that may not be uh, true. It, it's not a that's it, but that's not a matter of opinion. Well, we're not here to argue with Jay. Okay, uh, I just am guessing that it's going to be a lot longer to get these electric trucks able to do a three hundred plus mile range fully loaded than it is to be able to say that they can do it right out of the box as long as they don't put load it down to what its capacity to tow is going to be. And I think I hope that these magazines that tow that test trucks like this will actually test these vehicles fully loaded to their maximum capacity and then give us a report on just how far they were able to get before they needed a charge and whether it's practical to say that this this kind of vehicle could be going across country uh, on a daily basis uh, like such as the camper uh, crews, the camper crowd does when they go on vacations and, and that they'll find charging stations that are going to be able to handle charging these bigger vehicles, which will take up the space of about 10 electric cars, uh, to be able to recharge them in a, in a timely manner so that they won't be a burden on uh, electric truck sales uh, when we get to that point where there won't be any fossil fuel trucks around, which I think is probably about 30 to 40 years away. So okay. that's it until Jay says well, I, I, it's going to happen. Again, I... I, I there's no doubt that the infrastructure, uh, electric charging stations, that uh, need to evolve and evolve rapidly. Uh, but I think the range, uh, if anything, the range on, on pickup trucks is going to be is already easier to uh, achieve than it is with with cars. Um, both Ford, I don't know what the exact numbers on the Ford Lightning are, but I know that with the uh, Ford Silverado, uh, the Chevy Silverado coming out in about a year, which is based, it's the same platform and the same powertrain as the uh, hump coming out just fall. Uh, the range is going to be, with, with certain power uh, packs, is going to be 400 miles. And that is pretty much on par with gas-powered pickup trucks. And I think that when, you, when you're going to be towing, you're going to go down to a 200, 250-mile range, which is what you get with a with a, with a gas power truck, I, I think it's going to be very similar. Um, and by the way, uh, so Chevy's coming out, GM is coming out with that electric Silverado. Uh, they're a little behind Ford's uh, Lightning, but um, then again, GM may get it right. Uh, and and I've read reports of uh, uh, Hummers being spotted in California. They're blistering fast. Uh, which a lot yeah, of that's not uh, truck drivers really right. like, uh, and I think it. I, I think it's going to. If I do think uh, a, a good part of the crowd of people driving pickup trucks is is just going to be easily attracted to electric uh, uh, pickup trucks. Once they try it, they like it. I mean, okay. that's my. Let's go back to the 2022 vehicles because we're going to run out of time without only having covered three. You must have a bigger list because that's about my list short of uh, sticking with a 2021 Honda Ridgeline pickup truck, which now looks more like a truck than it did. Speaking uh, of gas guzzlers, uh, I've read great reviews of the new, um, and we've talked about it before, The uh, it's a 2022 uh, Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. So this is the vehicle that, that is the, the biggest in, in the uh, SUV lineup, in the Jeep SUV lineup. So it's, it's, uh, it's bigger than the Grand Cherokee and the Grand Cherokee L. Uh, both of which are new platforms um, that came out in 2021 for the for the long version of the Cherokee uh, Grand Cherokee, and and this year in the quote unquote normal size of the Grand Cherokee. But the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer are more like uh, uh, Chevy Suburban, Cadillac Escalade, 
uh, side Lincoln are Navigator. actually wider. Um, I don't know about length. They're about the same. Wider and heavier than both the Escalade and the Navigator uh, from Lincoln. And mostly, uh, I've read really great reviews, uh, great fit and finish. Um, the the way the, the truck, it is a truck. It's based on a, a Dodge Ram 1500. The way it handles is, is not necessarily... Um, Testers are not agreeing on, 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 the quali- on the ride quality, but overall it's a great vehicle. But it also has a, uh, a good old-fashioned uh, V8, I think it's a 6.7 liter V8, uh, that puts out around 475 horsepower. And speaking of range, uh, because the, I'm sure the gas mileage is pretty horrendous, I'm sure the range is not going to be all that great with that vehicle. But all, you know, it's, it's also an 80 to 100 Ten thousand dollar vehicle, so it's right. not for everybody. But it, one tester described it as being like the equivalent of uh, the American equivalent of the uh, uh, Range Rover. So it, it's 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 um, it's getting good reviews. Yeah, well, that's a good thing. All right, and uh, in the final three minutes, anyone want to say anything about how um, <laughs> unconsciously a lot of people are still driving or not? It's an ongoing problem. We could do this every show, and I don't want to belabor it. Uh, it's too bad that the, the whole population of drivers doesn't listen to us. So maybe we could improve it just by harping on how bad these drivers do you, do you, are. Do you think that? I, it's just it's, it. It is pretty. It's pretty interesting to me. I, you, you know how. Uh, again, it, there are a lot more drivers up here. People love to drive. And by the way, unfortunately, there's a demographic component to it, kind of like the older they are. The In a lot of cases, you know how it used to be older people driving was more diabolical. Now it's not as bad as it once was. But I mean, be, only because there seems to be a, you know, a, a just more of a willingness to, um, you know, look, look, look around and see where you are sighted in the well, environment. Well, you know, this bit about driving uh, has been going on for some time about how people don't want to return to subways and, 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 and Amtrak type vehicles, to, uh, yeah, transportation to get to work. Um, that may be part of the reason we have to see more cars on the road, but it's just, you know, a lot of us were off the road for such a long time, and the roads were delightfully empty during that time, I might add. I'm sure Jay would agree doing all the driving he does. Um, but now things have returned to normal. Uh, I just made a trip uh, back up and up and back to Maine to pick up uh, a stepdaughter at camp, and going up was four hours and ten minutes. Coming back was five hours and forty minutes because, and this was on a Saturday. And Saturday, is, of course, is a weekend time, and it is a traveling time. And uh, uh, coming south on uh, the main turnpike and into New Hampshire and then into Massachusetts, uh, it was clogged at, at many parts, and it just added that hour and 20 minutes or 10 minutes so or whatever. So here's too. a simple tip. Plan so the, your trip. Figure out when to start your trip. When you can't, when you're told you have to pick up a, a child at 10 o'clock in the morning and you can't arrive at 12, and, you, and so you have to plan your trip around the destination requirements as much as anything else. So it, you're right, Jay. It'd be nice if we could just plan our trip and figure out when the when the high. Uh, uh, well, yes, when highway, you're assigned. Uh, I, I... Flag times were at every point along a trip such, such as that, but it just is not possible to do it that way on a continuous basis. I don't think. Yeah. And one word about Carvana. I'm in my final Carvana. Uh, delivery process. They have not. Uh, they may have delivered my plate to my uh, my home address in Connecticut, but I'm not there to receive it. But that is the final step to completing my Carvana purchase situation, and I will say it has been 95 percent pleasant. And when did it start? Uh, in June. The beginning of June, end of June, middle of June. Yeah, but but you know, Carvana didn't deliver my car with a uh, emissions test, and we'll, I know we got to end. We do. But Carvana sales in North County, North Carolina County, in a North Carolina county, were suspended because they did not pre uh, emissions test the vehicles that they were delivering to customers, and they were also violating some other aspect of the car delivery situation, which could have applied to the cars in Connecticut if other cars like mine were not delivered with pre emissions done on them when I took delivery. I had to go. Well, that's something that we're going to have to, we, we will have to pursue, but you are, as okay. you correctly stated, we're done. He Out is of time. 
Yeah, he is Robin Leach. He is Jay DeMarkin. This is Car Keys. Mm-hmm.